How much, and more specifically, what am I supposed to share with my colleagues? That's the single question that each and every person who works on a distributed team asks themselves. It doesn't matter if they are a veteran like me, I've been leading a distributed company for more than 10 years now, or if they've been thrust into remote work only recently. In this video, I'm going to share with you a guiding framework based on a simple acronym that will help you identify which information will be effective when you share it with your co-workers. Pick any guide on remote work, and there are lots, and it will tell you that communication on a distributed team is important, even essential. Some remote work experts talk about narrating your work or working out loud. But how loud can you get before it becomes noisy? How can you tell in the moment if something is worth sharing? In my company, we have a shared Slack channel that is named after the framework that I've created as guidance. DIRECT. This acronym stands for the seven topics that are important for remote teams of any size or expertise. Decisions, insight, results, emotions, contacts, and troubles. Wait. Didn't I say seven topics? Yes, I did. There is a seventh topic that I didn't think of myself. I think it was Pilar RT who extended the meaning of the final T to thanks. And I think that's a great addition, so thank you, Pilar. Decisions, insights, results, emotions, contacts, troubles and thanks are the core topics of effective team communication. Let's look at each of them in detail. Every time two roads diverge in front of you, you get to choose which one to go and which one to leave, as Robert Frost put it, not taken. Each of these decisions will affect the course of your journey. Well, on a team, you are on a journey together. And that's why it is essential to share all decisions that might affect the team with your team. Let me give you an example how even the small decisions are just as relevant to be shared as the rare big ones. When my co-workers and I get to work in the morning, we decide what our most important tasks for the day are going to be, and we share them on our direct channel. This not only sets expectations and creates accountability, it also allows our co-workers to weigh in. Just recently, my plan for the day triggered a gentle reminder that there was a deadline coming up that had slipped my mind and that really should have my full focus. Every decision, except the most trivial ones, is going to change the situation and your team will have to adapt to this change. Let them know what's coming as early as possible. The neat thing about using asynchronous communication channels in distributed work is that we can post the tiniest tidbits without fear of overwhelming people or interrupting an ongoing conversation. For example, just recently, I learned that I can assign application-specific functions to the extra buttons on my mouse. I shared that finding, and only shortly after, someone else responded how that little tip made their work so much easier. I think it's obvious why sharing insight is so important in distributed teams. But it will require extra effort, because spontaneous exchanges aren't going to happen as easily as with co-located teams. When it comes to sharing knowledge in a distributed team, you can not over-communicate. 
Of course, you need to think about how you are going to share your little bits of wisdom. In a shared office space, you wouldn't walk into the center of the room and shout out your latest findings. So don't post them to the random Slack channel you happen to be in either. Together with your team, first find the right way to keep each other in the loop without distracting everyone. And also, don't make your coworkers guess what consequences your findings are going to have for them. If you've seen the movie Office Space, you know the management method that I call counting butts in chairs. It's lazy and ineffective. In my opinion, the best work environment is the so-called results-only work environment. For individual contributors, an ROWE provides great freedom. When you are measured exclusively by your results, only the quality and timeliness of your work counts. How you did your work, when you did your work, and if a cat was involved, is completely irrelevant. For the managers, an ROWE creates focus. They need to build the groundwork for the desired results. It is their responsibility that individual contributors can work their magic. Their key performance indicator changes from counting butts in chairs into measuring the progress that everyone is making towards the business goals. Because each finished result is a success that brings us closer to our shared goals, we have to communicate and celebrate our results. It's not a secret that it's hard to judge someone's emotional state via digital communication. We can make it easier for our coworkers by being proactive in communicating if we are tired, happy, anxious, distracted, preoccupied, excited or exhausted. By sharing our state of mind, we set expectations and also invite valuable feedback. A lot of people will cheer for you when things are good and offer help when they're not. Because this is so important, I encourage my team to not only share their plans in the morning, but also their state of mind. And since it's just us here, I'll admit that I also have a hidden agenda. Sharing your state of mind requires a self-assessment. And in doing that assessment, you set your own expectations for the day. This can take a lot of pressure off you, especially on your low performance days. On more than one occasion, I was able to salvage our relationship with a customer by talking to them over the phone instead of continuing a writing battle via email. Giving sincere feedback can make a coworker stay. It can also be a wake-up call to make necessary changes. In some cases, reaching out to the right person can even turn a whole business around. Contacts have consequences, and that's why there is the C in direct. Keep your coworkers in the loop about relevant contacts. Prepare them for future interactions. Create excitement in your team for new developments. Make them aware of necessary course corrections. We all get stuck with a problem once in a while. In no environment, this is easier to hide than in remote work. But it's almost impossible to hide it forever. On so many occasions, I had to admit that I wouldn't be able to meet a deadline because I got stuck and didn't ask for help in time. And do you remember the last time someone on your team blew a fuse for a seemingly minor reason? Help and empathy make a team so much more productive. But especially on a distributed team, this requires transparency. When you hold back until you're getting called out, or until you can't take it anymore, it's often too late to salvage the situation. And you're also eroding the trust 
of your team in your ability to get things done. I know it's easier to share your successes than your struggles. But when your whole team creates an atmosphere in which everyone feels safe showing vulnerability, together you can prevent troubles from becoming disasters. It's nice that we don't have to end on a negative note. As I mentioned in the beginning, the T can, should also mean thanks. Expressing gratitude not only feels good for the person on the receiving end, it also strengthens your relationship, which in turn will make it easier for you on a different occasion to provide criticism as well. But did you know that saying thanks also benefits you? In The Happiness Advantage, Sean Aker makes a solid case for sharing gratitude. Psychologist Robert Emmons, who has spent nearly his entire career studying gratitude, has found that few things in life are as integral to our well-being. Countless other studies have shown that consistently grateful people are more energetic, emotionally intelligent, forgiving and less likely to be depressed, anxious or lonely. That's why part of my morning ritual is the five-minute journal, in which I write down three things for which I'm thankful. This practice not only keeps my batteries charged, it's also something that I can read when I'm in a less than ideal mood. For remote collaboration to function well, we'll have to continually share what's going on, all the while keeping our signal-to-noise ratio high. When I feel that I haven't checked in with my team in a while, I use the direct acronym to identify events that are well worth sharing. I'd like to end my video with a few tips that will make the information stand out from the data. Be as clear and unambiguous as possible. Don't make people guess your intention behind posting something. Focus on big picture information. Answer the question, what does that mean for me and for the team, before it's asked. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, simply reach out on Twitter. And if you've tried direct for yourself, let me know how it's working for you.